While you were out, that's the memo President Obama sent Congress. While senators were on recess, the president appointed Richard Cordray to head the newly created Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. For our next guest, that was about the worst news possible. He compares the CFPB to the <coughs> FBI under J. Edgar Hoover. Richard Hunt is the president of the Consumer Bankers Association, which represents the retail banking industry here in America. He joins us from Washington. Richard, earlier today I was thinking to myself, should I ask you if we're overplaying this Cordray bad for bankers? Uh, but with this comparison to the FBI under Hoover, uh, I'm thinking perhaps not. Explain to me why Richard Cordray represents such a threat in your mind to your industry. Well, when I made that comment, it was not about Mr. Cordray personally. It was about the creation of the CFPB. It has enormous powers without many checks and balances. Uh, everything we've heard from Mr. Cordray is that he's very tough but very fair from our banks in Ohio. If you take a look at the CFPB, it has enormous powers because it has very little checks and balances. First off, there is a sole director, not a commission. Now, a commission was passed by the U.S. House of Representatives led by Barney Frank. Barney Frank, the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee and the most liberal member of the United States Congress who said the CFPB should have a commission, not a director. Number two, the checks and balances over a veto uh, does not exist. The president has a more likely of a chance to have his veto overridden than a rule proposed by the CFPB. You need seven out of nine commissioners of the FSOC to override any action by the CFPB. That simply just will not happen. Well, then who would you want to see in this job? Well, we're not, we're not opposed to Richard Cordray. We just want a commission of five people, just like the FDIC has, just like the FCC has, just like the SEC. All of those people have a five-person commission, not a sole director. What would happen if you had a rogue director who was unchecked? That would be very bad for consumers and for banks together. Richard, how can you possibly say that uh, the director of the CFPB will be unchecked. Uh, the, some people would say that the CFPB was already emasculated by being forced to become part or, or at least an agency within the Federal Reserve. There is oversight from the Fed, is there not? Well, there is not anymore. Now that you have a director in place, it is an independent agency just like other independent agencies. When you talk about the Federal Reserve Board, they get 10 percent of their they get 10 percent of their salaries from of their budget from the, the Fed. So there's no checks and balances for the CFPB. But isn't there some level of exhaustion between super committees, subcommittees, having these consortium of people? Washington's not getting anywhere. Having one person as a governing body might actually create progress. Sure, I understand the question, but we think there's going to be more scrutiny of the CFPB with a sole director versus a commission. No one is really complaining about the FDIC or the SEC coming up with reasonable, sound policies. Once those agencies come out with a, an initiative, most people in Washington understand there was a deliberative process underway, and for the most part, that rule is going to happen. Not necessarily with the CFPB, I think, at the beginning stages. And Richard? Uh, sorry, I was just going to. Have we lost Richard Hunt? Richard, are you still there? Okay. Nope. Uh, I'm still me. here. Thank you. Good. Uh, you know, many of our viewers are investors, they're financial professionals. They want to understand this situation that you face in terms of numbers. Put it into perspective for us. Richard Cordray, worst case scenario, how much is he going to limit the profitability of your industry? Well, one thing we're concerned about is a new provision granted to the CFPB now that there is a director in place, and that's called UDAP, Unfair, Deceptive, and Abusive Practices. So I'm sure there were some Just many days ago that the ATM or the 10-1 mortgage loan was called an abusive product. Uh, we are hoping that the CFPB will be rational and uh, not be abusive in their power and not have major enforcement action. One beauty of the CFPB I need to mention to your viewers is now they get to regulate the non-bank industry. Now that's a positive sign to have a, a director of the CFPB. Now 70,000 payday lenders and mortgage originators will now be regulated by the federal government to have a level playing field in the banking industry. That is a very positive development. All right, well, a silver lining uh, there of a sort, right? Richard, thank you for joining us here. Good to see you this morning. Richard Hunt of uh, the Consumer Bankers Association. He's the president there joining us from Washington, D.C.